We witnessed, actually, uh, Mohammed Mustafa, this prominent human rights attorney, uh, after six days in detention in an uh, illegal immigrant detention center here in Istanbul. He was released. He didn't even have time to go up to his hotel room to shower to get clean when European diplomats swooped in in a car, informed him that he was not secure at his current location. They put him in the car and they have led him away to a, presumably a secure location. He is currently under European diplomatic protection right now. Now, he fled Iran after he was taken in for interrogation on July 24th. He has helped marshal international attention to the case of Sakine Ashtiani, a woman who is sentenced to death by stoning after she was convicted of adultery. Now, shortly after he was detained and interrogated in Tehran and then released, he says that his wife, Fereshte, was taken into custody by Iranian authorities, and he says she is still being held in an Iranian prison. This is what he told us just moments ago on the phone. Take a listen to this, Rosemary. Unfortunately, Fereshte has spent the last 13 days in prison, in the security and intelligence wing of the prison, and she is in solitary confinement. And I think the Iranian government, because they know and they are aware that they cannot reach me and that they know that I'm out of Iran right now, that in the near future, there's a high possibility that my wife will be released from prison. She's under a lot of pressure right now, and her mental state is not good. They imprisoned her illegally, and she's also being tortured. Now, Rosemary, another difficult, life-changing decision that this man made when he fled Iran, he left behind his seven-year-old daughter, Parmide. And when I asked her about Parmide and how that felt to make that decision, he choked up and he said just hearing the name of his daughter makes him want to cry. Rosemary? Ivan, it's, it's a very difficult story to tell, isn't it? And what is the next uh, likely step in this? Well, he is likely to be granted asylum, according to Turkish foreign ministry officials, presumably in Europe, within a matter of days. His big question, when will he ever be able to see his wife, who, as he said, is in solitary confinement, held in an Iranian prison without charge, or his daughter, who is now living with, his, uh, uh, with her grandparents, when will he be able to see them again? Another question, what about one of his clients, uh, this woman, uh, Mrs. Ashtiani, the 42-year-old mother of two who is now awaiting a decision from Iranian judicial authorities on to whether or not she will be executed. Will she be executed by hanging or by stoning, as originally she was sentenced? Or perhaps will her sentence be commuted? He is hoping that she will not ultimately be executed. But a lot of questions in the air right now. Another point to keep in mind, uh, Mr. Mustafai is just one of many Iranians that I have met here in Turkey, which is the informal first stop on an underground railroad for Iranian dissidents and opposition leaders and journalists who have been persecuted by the Iranian government and they flee illegally across the border here to Turkey and request asylum. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the number of Iranians requesting asylum per month has gone up each month since controversial presidential elections were held in Iran last summer people, more Iranians are fleeing now that the Iranian government has launched a widespread crackdown on critics of the Iranian government.